a funeral service. My name is uh, Brother Desmond Hamilton, and I've been uh, speaking back uh, this morning today. Just by our way of um, announcement, or uh, just some housekeeping, um, uh, inside the chapel we could refrain from taking any uh, photographs. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, the, the program that we have will uh, proceed as well. We'll, we'll start with an opening uh, hymn, uh, I Am a Child of God. It's found on the week's week in the program. After our opening hymn, uh, we'll have um, a So after our opening hymn, we'll actually have an opening prayer that we offer by time and peace. Um, 
can say to remember the life that we have and we ask that you may please help us that we may live our lives uh, to be able to be willing to live the things one day. We're grateful um, for my son's atonement and all that he has done for, to help us to be able to come back uh, to the we are so grateful we ask you for our spirit to comfort us um, this day when we say these things to open this book. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Okay. So you might have noticed that uh, by the door there is a number of um, little paper yellow stars. Now the family has asked that if um, you have some memories or, or some experiences that you'd like to share with the family or with the experience with, with uh, Ricky, and um, if you could fill those out and, and place those in the box uh, uh, as you leave. This morning. Okay. Uh, we, we will uh, start the uh, uh, service this morning. A uh, uh, talk given by Sister Anita Simpson. After Sister Anita, uh, we will have um, uh, Nick, uh, Nicole uh, to receive you. Sister Simpson. Okay.
something different, and this is no trick. In heaven, nobody will ever get sick, or our hearts will be healed, and the deaf will all hear. The blind will see clearly. There's nothing to fear. Everyone here will be able to talk, to sing, and to dance, and to run, and to walk. In heaven, God serves you the very best man. You'll never be broken. Now that's a good deal. The clothes that you'll wear will be white and so clean. In heaven, you won't need a washing machine. Even the animals won't want to fight. They'll all get along and they won't scratch or bite. Though time has no ending, you'll never get bored. For thousands of years, seem like days to the Lord. Heaven is full of such beautiful things. The music of millions of angels who sing. Rivers like crystal and seas smooth as glass. Emeralds glow like springtime glass. Mountains and jewels of every type. Trees full of fruits and juicy and ripe. Sadness and pain will be taken away. Once you are there, you'll be happy to stay. All of God's children, the young and the old, will gather together on streets made of gold. And there, there will be such a grand celebration when heaven and earth have become one creation. Life will be perfect, for heaven's the place. We'll see God the Father and Son face to face. For God will be there everywhere that you are and Jesus will shine like a bright morning star. Heaven is wonderful, don't you agree? It's simply the best place we ever could be. And I'm sure we all know that that's where Ricky is now. We love you, Ricky. Miss you and look forward to our heavenly reunion. In the name of Jesus Christ. I had no idea at the time that this was 
the tip of the iceberg of the medical journal and roller coaster ride that we're about to embark on. Apart from the cataracts being removed at 12 months old, he was quite a healthy boy until about the age of four when his more medical problems start to emerge. Epilepsy, bowel disease, bleeding and um, bleeding and immune issues were diagnosed. And then a year or two later, lung disease came into effect. Ricky was always a lover of music, and his second favourite song became Twinkle Little Star, which would quickly became his favourite song of all times. So that's why we've got the thing for Twinkle Star. My mother did a, he used to do Twinkle Star from a very young age. He used to do this to show me he wanted me to sing it. And my mother thought he would do that the first time as about eight months old. She was so excited. Um, um, and um, another song that he also really loved is a song that we sing in the closing song. My Hand Father loves me. We sang it every single night, and we keep and I still sing it. It's always been my kids' favourite song, the nighttime song that we do um, before they went to bed, and, and um, it was their our routine. And Kita really didn't want to share that when he was born. She said, No, that is my song. <laughs> and I'm like, We don't share it. <laughs> um, yeah, and he also loved singing. And in church, he used to sometimes be so loud, we had to take him out because he was like, kept on singing after the song had finished. He was like, Mickey, it's time to quiet now. Um, okay, about the age of 12 months, we just started engaging and learning to communicate what songs he wanted by his finger actions like the Twinkle Star. And as you'll see in the slide, Chester Fire, Ricky had such a beautiful personality, always giggling and smiling, a very happy boy, and loved his colours. When he was sick, he seemed to think it was funny and would even laugh at himself. Even when in hospital, really sick, he always managed to find a smile and a giggle and sometimes be really cheeky with the nurses and flirt with them. As it soon became evidence of his purpose here on earth. Ricky had taught so many that you do not need to speak or see clearly to be a great teacher. Yeah. As he grew older, Ricky was very aware of his surroundings and would tell his sister off. If she raised her voice to me, he would growl, Rah! and Kitty goes, oh, he's angry at me again. I said, yes, well, you need to talk, talk mostly quietly. <laughs> um, and even with my... Um, and even other carers if they were watching him and he would he would also tell them off because they're doing something different than I, how I did it. And he even told my mum off one day when she was watching him. Just a special degree that he had taught them so much in their medical field. Like they would always be they. Our friends were marked at the strength and patience after having endured so much in his short life. Everyone noted and felt how special he was to be around and the peace that radiated from him. Ricky was dearly loved by all and knew him, that knew him, especially our family. He was taught, he had taught me so much about pure love, non-judgmental, to believe in myself and to help build my confidence up, to enable me to stand up when I needed to be the spokesperson he required to ensure his medical specialists were able to diagnose him correctly. I became a specialist of Ricky, Syndrome and was able to then be a, on his behalf teach many medical students about his condition through participating in pre exams and exams. I learnt inner strength, great passion, and Ricky made me a better person overall and all of those who knew him. I found myself becoming very protective of Ricky in hospital in the last few years when he became extremely ill. And especially in when it comes to cannulation for the, to, when he needs his IVs to, to provide him with intravenous antibiotics. I don't think I was very popular amongst some of the medical students. They so were coming to the room all excited, we're gonna try and cannulate a hard kid. And I would um, like question them and give them the third degree of their qualifications and how long they've been working at the hospital and how much of their experiences. And, and um, when they would, if they would tell me they were just this registrar, which is a junior in the hospital, 
I want to tell them that Ricky is not a pink cushion and them to go practice and find, go for them to practice on and to go find another child that they can cannulate that have veins. The last couple of years have been the most difficult for Ricky, resulting in him missing out on so much within the community, school, church and family functions. Spending so much one-on-one -on -one time with him through this time, he didn't like to be apart from me and would if we hit it, a do door shut in hospital, he would get yell out, ah, to make sure that I hadn't left. Um, and even at home, when he was well enough to go to school, he would growl at me and shake his leg when I tried to put his shoes and socks on for school. <laughs> he, tried to, he had to endure so much pain, sickness, and many hospital admissions, the last one being the most difficult. Um, Ricky's absence seizures became uncontrollable when he slipped into a coma Friday fortnight ago and was transferred to Hummingbird House where carrying dedicated nursing staff.